An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. A genuine expression. A sermon. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, pure time and velvet style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be you to the fullest. Welcome to today's Inspire Higher Blab. I'm your host, Lisa Black from Heart Magic. Really, really delighted to be able to have the glorious, creative sex bomb that is Katerina Roy. Uh, I just want to take a moment to um, welcome her. I met Katerina last year and absolutely fell in love with her with a post she had on Facebook of her dancing. And she was shimmying and shaking. And uh, she was really, really permitting herself to be seen. And I think that's such a crucial element of increasing your impact today i'm very blessed to be talking with her on zoom not blab for today but we're going to get this done anyway we had some trouble with audio so we're just going to flip on over and be adaptive and utilize zoom and we'll post this replay for everyone who wanted to catch the inspire higher blab today so um, a big welcome to katarina roy <laughs> Hi, Lisa. I love your headdress right now. This is so cool. I was like, Katarina's fully going to be digging my peacock power. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm really excited um, to be able to hear you've just moved. I just moved house yesterday and you've just moved over. You moved from, was it Arizona? Where were you living before, sweetheart? I was in Texas. Texas. From Texas to Honolulu, yeah. Hawaii. And you've got the shell earrings to prove your connection with the island. Gorgeous. My husband just got me these for Valentine's Day. I love oh, them so much. Oh, they're so, <laughs> so, oh, they're so new. So today we're going to be talking about how to kind of get more explosive in our creativity. I'm really excited to hear from Katarina um, some powerful tips of how you can really um, tune in, I would say she's going to say, and then how you can really give deep permission for whatever wants to come through you to come through you. Um, so it's very, I don't know, I've been all excited about interviewing you, Katarina, so I'll just, I'll just let my girl crush buzz um, simmer down. <laughs> um, how long have you been a creative prowess genius for now? Beautiful. Oh, it's going on 12 years. I have wow. been really actively engaged in my art. Wow. So. And what's, what's the intention for you? Like, what's the purpose of your creative expression, sweetheart? It started years ago as being a mode of expression because my throat chakra was really closed down like we talked about in our peacock power post. And uh, it was a way for me to actually get my feelings out because I was in a very chaotic household. It was very crazy and I didn't really feel like I had permission to speak. Wow. And so art was very much so an empowerment thing for me from the start. It was a place for me to express my heart and to express what wanted to come through and it was also a safe place because I didn't have to write it down my I have four siblings and so they all love to go through everybody's journals and you know go tattletale and like you know do the whole thing with what kids do yes. so for me my art came before my writing did so I would do very symbolic pictures that had deep significance for me and they were a bit shrouded in mystery because you couldn't really exactly say what it was about but it was something that I knew what it meant and that was all that mattered oh, wow. so, yeah. I think that's really um really powerful for people to be able to understand um I guess I've never really got that I studied art and I'm like why can't they be clearer why do they want me to start <laughs> with the images why can't they just tell me what it means you know because you know how big I am on speaking my truth and be clear and being really transparent and and forthright and that's created a lot of resistance in my life because I just run around telling everyone the truth all the time <laughs> and so yeah. 
I haven't ever really fully appreciated um, the sanctity of symbolism that you had permission to express yourself and bring it out into the world for yourself and yet it was shrouded in enough mystery that you couldn't be attacked or you couldn't be ridiculed for that expression. You've just taught me like a fundamental of um, art history, no doubt, right there. <laughs> well, it's really, art is one of the biggest acts of courage that I think I've ever undertaken in my life. And even more so as I have been honing my craft over the past few years to be more clear and be more forthright in what I'm saying rather than shrouding it in symbolism and mystery. You know, so in the recent years, I've painted a lot of paintings of women naked and I've painted a lot of goddesses and just really like, like women empowerment kind of stuff. And I've had people tell me that my paintings were demonic and that they were evil because they were, they were such expressions of feminine empowerment. Oh. And so, yeah, I mean, that was, that was some of the stuff that was trying to stay hidden before, but my art has evolved with me as much as I'm coming out and being more big in the world. My art does that same thing, you know, cause it, it and I are developing at the same rate. So it really feels like the common thread here for you is women's empowerment to liberate yourself, but obviously to call more women into liberation. What's, what are the outcomes of that empowerment or that liberation for you? For me, the outcome is really being okay with who I am, however I am. And I think that that has been the biggest thing for me. It's been coming out of shame. It's been coming out of eating disorders and addictions and um, just overall sickness and malaise inside of my body. And so the paintings that I do of women, they're, they're pictures of women almost in ecstasy. Like they're, they're like, like, like just being liberated right there in that moment. You know, that's a very, very glorified sense of what the actual process is. It's a very like up and down roller coaster kind of road. But the moment of exaltation of being like, yes, this is freedom. This is who I am. This is okay. I am one with the universe, with the cosmos. I am one with everything. I'm one with myself. Mm, beautiful. <gasps> Well, that is just a, it's a really nice capsule. Do you know what I mean? To be able, yeah. for me to, be able to, because I, I don't, I'm not as, you know, my words are everything for me. So I haven't gone that far down painting. I did some intuitive painting last year and I found it very, um, there are a lot of honesty, things that I couldn't reveal to myself verbally. I gave myself permission to express unconsciously through the colors that's the key yeah because th that's the truth that's what's yeah. actually really going on that you can't verbally admit to yourself so i think this will be really powerful for people to hear if you've ever felt a desire for creative expression and you're kind of going to what end i think this could be a really good capsule for those people to be able to justify it because mm -hmm. um in the I, I ran a healing with intuitive painting workshop last year and what was so interesting was the judgment that people had around the end outcome Whereas the teacher was saying it's the process of creation that is where the gold is. It's, it's allowing yourself to be with that expression rather than having it locked into an outcome. But this is life. How many people do we see running around locked on an outcome mm -hmm. and not organically shifting into the process that actually forms the outcome? This is detachment, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. And that whole outcome focused thinking is what I grew up with in the art world of, I mean, I was pursuing an art career before I ever went to the healing arena. And um, I was, I was accepted into like, you know, the most prestigious school in the United States. Like I just, I, that was where I was headed. Yeah. And I realized that a lot of the artists there were spiritually malnourished. Yeah. because they didn't have that freedom to just be artists and creators. It was like, you know, you are a producer. You are somebody Production. creating for that end goal. Yeah. Wow. So that's why I ultimately left that for a while. And I mean, I, I will be re-entering the art world, but just with greater awareness of who I am. Yeah, you know, beautiful, Katarina, wow. And, you know, it's so lovely that there are stages to things and that we're drawn to different things at different times. 
but I, I really honor your desire to come at it from a place of truth and wholeness because I'm, you know me, I'm so big on making sure that we're honoring our truth because I think that affects everything that we're going to do when we show up in that place. So like you're exactly. saying, yeah, their, their artwork, as magnificent as it is, I guess my problem is, is that while it can be receiving accolades and, you know, receiving high prices, if it's not a fulfillment and a clear and honest expression from that soul, it's actually going to be inevitably destructive to their truth. Hey, hon. Yeah. I mean, I've watched so many artists become cocaine addicts and alcoholics and, oh my gosh, just have so many sorts of dysfunctions because yeah. there's this pressure to keep producing, keep wow. going, keep going, keep going. Wow. And and it's really sad, and that's been part of my journey, and part of the thing that I, I work with other people on is removing that pressure from yourself to be a producer and allow yourself to be a creator, mm. because creation has cycles. You know, there's energy movement of, you know, the ebb and the flow. There's, there's the ups and the downs, and you have to honor both of them. And the problem is, is that in art school, there's a lot of people running on stimulants to get their deadlines, and there's, there's this high pressure to be a peak performer all the time. Wow. So it doesn't really serve the natural rhythm. You know, like even Enya, you, you know Enya, right? Yeah. She creates like seven, eight year cycles. Her, yeah. her albums are spaced that far apart recently. Wow. So, but there's so much time to live life in between and be a balanced person. Yeah. So you don't actually need to go on this. I'm, you don't need to live the story of being the starving dysfunctional artist or the person who is just has all of these neurotic addictions and obsessions and, you know, all of the, the famous painters that you learned about in art school. Yes. You know, they had some sort of weird mental stuff going on, you know? They, they freaking did. <laughs> yeah. they, all, they all really did. And I think what, what, you know, from my background, all I can guess at is that as you give due diligence to that process and allow it to be what it'll be, you'll peak higher than you would if you tried to just stay high, yeah? Mm-hmm. And that is one of the biggest important things that I talk about is just that cocooning period as well. It's, it's really important to allow yourself to be nourished. Like this past, uh, these past couple months while I've been moving, I intentionally just did not post stuff online. Because I'm coming from a, like, like, like a place of, I need to post, I need to post, I need to post. And so I allowed myself to kind of just take space and to like, step back from this constant need to be achieving or doing or uh, putting stuff out there. I actually did a three-month hibernation retreat with my my life and it was amazing. And so for those three months, like, I just really went in and I allowed my roots to go really deep and to soak up all of the nourishment that I needed. And, you know, that meant having a lot of beach days, having a lot of time just to be doing nothing. And people don't understand when you're so creative that that kind of stuff is really important. It gives you, it gives your mind that space to just be blank and to like rest because that's when all of the ideas go in. I think it's so exciting to hear that because, you know, our topic today is how to increase your impact. You know, how do we up our impact? And I just think that would so not be what people would be expecting to hear. <laughs> No, it's not. That's because there's so much noise out there. Like, I, I sometimes can't hear myself think when I'm out there on Facebook or social media. And my creativity especially just gets so saturated with everybody else. And not saying that that's a bad thing. Sometimes it's fun to go see what other people are doing. But for somebody who's deeply engaged in the creative process, it can be poison. It can be literally like, like, ah. Any, any sort of new ideas you have growing can be squelched because you're comparing yourself or you're, you're being like, oh, well, it's not as good as that or blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So as I've been developing Paint Your Heart Out, I've had to like literally just like unsubscribe from people's emails, like just like kind of tune it all out because yeah. it's so important to go in. Yeah. It's so yeah. important to give myself that incubator of, of allowing the little seedling sprout. You know, it's so easy to get that little seedling knocked out of the grass and 
the roots kicked up before it even takes sprout, you know? Yeah, totally. And this is, so I'm going to be just deeply listening to everything that you have to share because you're such a cauldron of wisdom. It's such an honor to hear. <laughs> it's hard one wisdom, do you know what I mean? You are a deep observer, so you're not only transmuting the pain and suffering from your own life, but you're also witnessing and observing the pain and suffering from others and learning their lessons so that you don't have to repeat their. So it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to have um, gotten to the place where you are. So I guess just thinking about some of the points, if I can just summarize them, you know, paint your heart out. Is this going to be a new course? Is this like an online? It's about yeah, it'll be a group program where I'm together, you know, the worksheets and the curriculum and stuff. I'll be going through it with people, you know, week by week. It'll be a six-week program, and I'm thinking about releasing it in the springtime. So currently, I'm just, you know, getting really clear on what it is that I want to have in it because there's so much, mm -hmm. and that's the trick is to slow it down. Like, what are the essentials that people really need to have these transformations of – really having this experience of their own inner genius. Beautiful. Well, what's exciting about that is that you've already, I guess this is what I love about powerful teachers is that you have to be living what you're going to guide people through. So you've been through your incubator. So you'll no doubt be supporting people to create an incubator like experience. And it's interesting because last year was such a year of discovery for me. And I realized how much I could accomplish and what I wanted to accomplish. And I felt really big and I subscribed to heaps of people. I'm watching heaps of people doing courses on the side. And then this year I'm just like, boom, I know what I'm wanting to create. So let's, mm -hmm. let's just unsubscribe and let's get out of some of the Facebook groups that aren't in alignment anymore. Let's unsubscribe from the people. Let's really have a Facebook yeah. clear <laughs> so that you can really focus in on the energies and the support that's going to strengthen you so that's really lovely for people to hear. That could be a really great point to increase your impact and also to be able to expand into your creativity. You've got to diminish your influences because what I love about you, Katarina, is that you love being inspired from within. And I think that's why I love your work so much because it's so organic. And I think artists can easily, all creative people, we really do look to what we see and we, we look and see what other people yeah. are creating. And we judge our own creations. It is so, so important. That is like, if anything, that's the highlight of this, this lab right here is mm -hmm. it's so important to tune all of that stuff out. I, for the longest time, I will be completely honest, I judged myself against like Marie Forleo and, you know, like Denise Duffield Thomas and all of these people who I saw doing these amazing creations. And then I had to stop for a second and be like, I am fucking 23 years old. <laughs> it is okay. I am not there yet. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah that's good. We're so absorbed into their world. Yeah. And, and their worlds are great. Don't get me wrong. Their yeah, worlds are yeah. amazing and they've done a lot yeah. for a lot of people. But when you are starting to come into your own power and even having the concept that you want to create more impact in this world, those people are self-inspired. Those people have been sourced from within. Yeah. So when you can actually tap into that stuff inside of yourself, you will become naturally similar, not yeah. the same. Yes. Similar of the same greatness that you look at them and you have girl crushes on them or, you know, crushes on whoever, the people that you put on the pedestal, you realize the pedestal isn't, it doesn't exist. It's an internal thing. Those people are just people who have gone in mm -hmm. and done the deep work and done the explorations inside of themselves and tuned the world out and then like, okay, this is what I'm creating. Mm -hmm. Go into mad scientist mode and, and you know, just like, get so obsessed with their own thing that that's all they think about. I mean, literally what I do is what I think about all the time. Mm. I don't have enough energy mentally to like think about what everybody else is doing and trying to like do their way. And it's just not interesting because I have so many ideas coming up all the, all the time mm. and I have to like write them down. I have notebooks and planners and, and things that I just, get it out because yeah. that's what happens when you are painting your heart out. That is what happens when you are sourced deep inside and anchored. 
-hmm. there's like this clear channel and it just will flow. It's funny because I, I was just going to say fun. you're fully channeling. Like I can feel that you, you know, for people who aren't maybe as familiar with channeling, I think it's nice to kind of bring it back to the chakra system that a lot of our power centers are actually, I guess, energy centers of alignment to allow a deep connection with the universe, with the beams and realms of light. Um, yeah, that a lot of our our permission and our right of authentic expression is also an act of submission to bring forward what they're inspiring us to bring forward. So it's interesting, you know, I know for a lot of artists really struggle, is this my creation or their creation? Hey, it's a bit of a paradox because it's always inspired, it's always flowing through us. But then if we didn't allow that to actually come into form, it couldn't have been seen or witnessed anyway. So it's kind of this submissive, we created it. <laughs> I did it with yeah. their help and it is mine, but I couldn't have done it without them. And I really, I love knowing that about you. Like it really, and that's why there's a purity to everything that you create and express because I know how much work you've done to actually give that permission and space. Like you're saying, your beautiful naked women were seen as being demonic. I just think it's hilarious, the judgments that we have. Yeah, it's so ironic that something that's so pure and so empowered, but it's deeply challenging. And that's why when you're channeling, you're bringing through truth that will unsettle some people that aren't prepared to embrace that. So we're going to there's going to be a buffeting. There's going to be a, some people go, oh, I love you. And other people are going to be like, oh, yeah. right, exactly. yeah. <laughs> it's almost like a sign that you're doing something really good. Hey, hun, like if, if you're getting that, the duality of that reaction, it's probably a really good sign. We are back. We had a slight crash from all the powerful energy that uh, Katerina and I are bringing through today. So, Oh, I've just been loving so much this interview. So I just checked. We de definitely have the file from before. I'll link them back up together. So what you're seeing now is the extension. We've restarted because um, I just love what Katerina is sharing. She started talking to us about this beautiful vision that she's received about creativity coming from a triangle walking along the beach the other day. So I'm sorry that we didn't get to catch that, sweetheart. Please continue. All right, so the triangle that I saw is the creativity triangle, obviously. So it starts with your self-expression. It also has your curiosity, and it also has your sexuality. So all three legs of this triangle need to function as a whole in order to, for you to be able to have the experience of heightened creativity. And when you kick any of those out, it just, the whole structure falls apart. Wow. So I'll start with I'll start with self-expression. <laughs> self-expression is one of those things where it's really important for you to be able to have your voice, right? The expression of Isn't allowing that your good voice. expressing its voice. Yeah, right? Yes. It, you need to be able to have that freedom of movement within your own self and your own voice enough to be able to put stuff out in the world. Otherwise, you're just going to keep it locked away inside of your head and you will never make anything. There is also the structure of curiosity. You need to be able to feel comfortable enough allowing yourself to explore what is really exciting to you. Like, for instance, I have wanted to paint a series of fairies for like the longest time, but for a while I was like, wait, why am I doing that? I should be focusing on other things, blah, 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 blah. And I just pushed it aside when they kept coming back stronger and I kept pushing them aside. And like these fairies, they want to come out of me. I'm like, why? <laughs> but you have to be willing to allow yourself to go there. I mean, like I painted this woman and she has no face. Like why? You know? <laughs> and I she has one it. of those neck extenders, but yeah. I allowed myself to go there and oh, to paint oh. what I was curious about. Yes. And from that, a whole different style of painting emerged and it was it was a really necessary step mm -hmm. for me to go there so mm -hmm. allowing yourself to be interested in what you're interested in if that's gardening or fly fishing or you know painting naked ladies dancing around a moonlight fire like you know whatever you want yeah, there are some there's some stigma against doing stuff like that because you mm -hmm. feel like oh well what if somebody sees it? What if they're really like, 
judgmental of the fact that I am interested in this thing. Okay, well that's the work you need to clean up in order to allow yourself to have the freedom to be more creative. Yeah. A lot of creativity is stopped because we're worried so much about what other people think. Mm. So, so the, okay, so there's the self-expression, mm -hmm. curiosity, and then the I sexuality. Know I know what's the sexuality, yeah. Yay. That is pure creative energy right there. Yeah. It is pure creative energy. So just so much like your throat and your your loins, that whole system needs to be able to be connected in order to be expressed. So if you are judging your sexuality or repressing things or like just feeling ashamed about certain things from your past, it's going to affect how you show up creatively. It's going to affect your voice. It's going to affect the self-expression, how curious you're allowing yourself to feel. Mm -hmm. So they really do all function as a triangle. It's interesting because sensuality is so much um, a byproduct of being willing to be curious and express who you really are as well. So I can see how, you know what I mean? Your sensuality can, it can, infuse a curiosity into the world like mm -hmm. I can see the relationship that all of them have independently Katarina I think this is mm -hmm. really powerful because I see I see your deep connection with your sensuality and I see I see what well, I feel the reactions that people have with that and I just know there's so there's still we're still steeped in such deep sensual repression and yep. uh, I know that you've been watching me really connecting with my own femininity and connecting with my own sense of sensuality as well, which gives so much more power to our self-expression because there's so much comfort there. You're like, this is who I am. You know, there's in my tribe, in the people that um, I love working with, is that there have been some huge woundings around sacral chakra. And I know you, yeah. you've totally moved mountains in regards to there. Now that we're here, let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about all the good things that <laughs> make me. Oh, 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 oh. So I would just right. love to hear. That just like float up out from you. Of course it did. Like, it does. This is what happens. That's sex. That's creativity. It's, it's blooming. It's flowering just like in the world. Mm. Can you share with us for people? Because I... I feel like you've, you've spoken really beautifully into curiosity. I feel like the incubator, you know, trusting um, your own inclinations and desires, really being self-inspired is really a powerful way to, to you know, experience curiosity. Self-expression is honoring our truth, giving our voice the freedom. And that was kind of what you covered in that first segment is that we can um, – permit ourselves to reveal who we really are through deep symbolism and through lots of medium expression. Talk to me about um, some powerful ways that you know to support women to heal that sh sacral chakra and to be able to step more into their sensuality. Oh, this is a juicy one, but this is one that uh, one of my healer friends, has, she taught me. She actually worked with people who were overcoming cancer and things like that. And, yeah. um, you know, self-pleasuring. It's really important. I'm just going to say it. Like, <laughs> it's really, it's super, super important to have that connection with yourself because you can't have that connection with anyone else or even your artwork if you're not allowing yourself to be witnessing what's going on inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think whatever healing technique that you want to do in order to come through these things, like I like to do forgiveness and EFT. I love tapping. It's so great. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, doing inquiry about things. Like I think there is some really deep sexual trauma that needs to be worked through with a healer or a counselor or a coach or whoever you want to talk to about that stuff. Um, but for most people, they're just, I've noticed there's tends to be just like this disconnect, even if they haven't had yeah. uh, sexual trauma, yeah. there tends to be just a disconnect from mm -hmm. our sexuality as women, because we are told that it's wrong to be sexual as a woman. Yes. Uh, you're supposed to keep it all covered up. You're supposed to keep it all like together and you know, you're not supposed to allow anybody to know about your desires or anything. So there's a, a deep suppression of your voice that comes in. Wow. And so again, I just want to say I'm talking to people who have never really experienced sexual trauma aspects. I'm not going to like try to be a therapist about that right here, but yeah. get help for that. Yeah. Uh, with most people, it's really important to 
allow yourself to start speaking up. Like for me, one of the biggest entrances into sacral chakra healing was belly dance. I really love belly dance because it got that energy moving and it felt safe. It felt like a very safe movement for me to start doing with myself because I, you know, I was anorexic. I had, I, I just, I hated my body. I didn't want to be sexual. I didn't want to be perceived as a sex object. Yes. Um, but to heal those perceptions, it's really important for you to understand what sacred sexuality is. It's really important for you to understand that you can have boundaries. You can allow yourself to shine and you also can allow what comes in and enters your sexual being, you know? So having those really strong boundaries are very important for you to feel safe creatively as well. When you are allowing yourself to exude what you want to and realize that whatever is going to come from the world can only like come so far because you're so strong in yourself, you're so tapped in, you're so anchored and rooted that whatever somebody says, it's not going to hit you. Um, so it'll bounce right off. Even when that lady said that stuff is demonic, you know, it was like, all right, I know who I am. I know what I'm creating. I know the purity um, of it. Yes. So. Okay, that brings us full circle back because that helps me to understand more now. If I were to put what you're saying into my words to help me to understand being anchored within is witnessing the purity of your truth and giving other people permission to experience it how they will as a reflection of who they are. Yeah, yeah that yeah. feels really good because if we try to be palatable and delicious and desirable to everyone, you're disgusting to everyone. I just, I did that. I tried to be appealing to everyone and I, I was disgusting to everyone. <laughs> Mostly myself, yeah. of course, because you can afford it. Yeah, totally. So I really love um, really being with yourself, being committed to honoring your own truth. You know, lately the words keep coming to me, expansive self-devotion. And for me, that's... Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Those words have been coming to me lately too. Yeah. Not just from those exact spring, but the same yeah. energy. Yes. It's like deep, deep self-support deep deep self-commitment yes being yeah. willing to show up 110 percent for yourself every single day yeah and, and this is why i love you know being with you because we're always resonating in a similar place and we're always epiphanizing really similarly and it's just a real joy because this expansive self-devotion that I'm talking about is permitting your sensuality to be what it will, giving yourself freedom to creatively, curiously explore what you feel inclined to and giving yourself permission, you know, because I think that is ecstasy. I think that's a really, a really beautiful word for it because the joy and liberation of not waiting for someone else to give you permission to be who you are and share what you want to share and express what you feel to bring forward because we are all channels. And if we truly gave this permission, I honestly believe that we're all here to lift and exalt one another. And there's people that are drawn to you, Katerina, I'm drawn to you to give me more permission to step into my truth and other people are drawn to me and then we're drawn to other people. But yeah. the more we can have people showing up in their truth and in their power, the more you're going to catch that person that needs you. So for the people that are watching this, if you're going, you yeah, I wish I could be like her or do this or do that. All you need to be is be you and, and know that you're going to inspire somebody and give them permission for the paradigm that they're in and the level of vibration that they're in. And that if we all just do this, we're fully just going to exalt one another. It's freaking exciting. Yeah. And I've already watched that stuff happen over the past yeah. couple of years. You know, yeah. I've watched as the people that I've been surrounded by, like, gradually are leveling up. Yeah. You know, my own husband, he is a completely different person than he was two and a half years ago when I met him. Mm. Like, completely, mm -hmm. completely different. Yeah. And it's amazing. I see him, he's wearing, like, his red sassy pants and, like, his, his bright top shirt, and he just got a haircut where his hair's all spiky, and he's just allowing himself to be sassy mm -hmm. and, 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 and just, like, really forward and loud, and, and he's giving that deep permission for himself to be big mm -hmm. because he had this tendency of yeah, being shrinking. small. Yeah, yeah. And I just love that, you know, because it's funny because my husband's been going through a similar thing where he's been learning this 
you know, a lot of us, a lot of us that are empathic become powerful chameleons because mm -hmm. we learn how to feel the needs that we find, but then we can get yeah. caught in becoming the reflection rather than the light that's being reflected. And um, yeah. I, I've found my husband really finding his center and really learning how to honor himself. And it, it's really not easy. And I sense that with your husband as well. He's learning how to honor instead of becoming what they need becoming what he needs himself to be that self-inspired that you spoke about before. And I think it's interesting that you have kind of brought up Marie Folio and some of these other people that are creating impact. And I just want to underline these people are self-inspired. If you want to have a tribe, if you want to rise up and to prominence, if you want to be able to really, really convert hearts to your message I think you really need to be self-inspired because we can all sniff it out a freaking mile away when you're trying to be something that you think you should be in order to get paid or get fame or whatever the hell people think they need to go yeah. for. Ah. It's, it's, it's insanity and it's, and it really is just like chasing the dog, chasing its tail. Cause it never comes. It never and comes. then you're burnt out and you're tired oh. and trust me, there. I yeah. have been there. We know it. We know it. That's why we We know. We know, it. We know it. <laughs> So what I'd love to hear, you know, everyone that I'm blessed to work with is always a reflection of me. So, you know, people healing the mother wound, people really permitting themselves to heal and step into their power. I'd love to hear because it will be revealing about where you are. Who are the people that are drawn to you? Who are the people that you're calling in to work with you right now, sweetheart? They're the people who have these creative projects that they just want to get out there and that they want to do something with, but for some reason they have felt stopped. Like, like they, like they get to that point of getting out there and then it's just like, mm, and they fall that. away from it. And so for me, that has been what the past year has been for me. It was a sifting out and sorting out and, and whittling down what it was I was doing. Cause I was, doing so many different things last year. My energy was in so many different directions that I wasn't giving the space that I wanted to, to my own visions and commitments to myself. Mm. So therefore, you know, the book deadline got pushed further and further away. And, you know, the e-courses got pushed further and further away. And it was just like all of these things that I really wanted to commit to just got pushed away. Mm. And that was because life happened and whatever, but it was deeply because I wasn't committing to me. Mm -hmm. And I take ownership of that yeah. because I understand the process now and how that happens. And it's not shaming myself or guilting myself. I just wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. And, and I am ready now and there's no stress. There's no frenzy about it now. Mm -hmm. And that's the amazing thing is when your mind is in this space of, Oh, I want to create something. You, you start getting worked up. You're like, oh, but I'm going to have to do all these things in order to make it happen, blah, 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 blah. And, and it, there's a panic that sets in. Mm -hmm. And then that's when the procrastination happens. And then you just stop doing it. Yeah. So, so, um, so I've worked through all of those waves this past year. And so now the people that I'm seeing coming forward for me are the people who are wanting to create these projects and to step out of this frenzy of, you know, self-denial and self-procrastination and just just putting themselves on hold. Oh, it's gorgeous. And you spoke of spring. I'm a bit confused because we're going into autumn. So when <laughs> is, when, <laughs> when, what month is your paint your heart out course going to be starting, sweetheart? I'm thinking April is when I'm shooting for. Beautiful. Beautiful. That feels lovely. I'll um, get some details from you and I'll put it in the link. We'll post this on YouTube as well um, so that anybody who's wanting to access your work will put up your website, katarinaroy.com, um, and we'll have a link to your Facebook page as well because it's one of my favorite, you know, pages to like. like. I have noticed you know, you diminishing your posts, but I've really honored that I'm like, ooh, something good is coming. <laughs> you know, I, really, I just, I know, I know it's so true. And I really appreciate your wisdom today. You know, I think um, I see you as that luminary leader. Do you know what I mean? I think Marie Folio is, is amazing, but I think I really love how cutting edge you are. You're so, um, you're being internally led rather than turning to an expert to lead and guide you. And I think that's what makes a real expert. It's such a paradox because you want to look to them. You want to see the reflection of who you are and use it to reconnect with yourself for a stage. But then you've got to get to a place where you own 
I am the source, I am the power, it is within me, I will rise up and I'll create this. And kudos to her that she can do that. But at the end of the day, she's really modeling permission for us to, to be and do that. So I see you being and doing that. I'm here championing everything that you're creating and everything that you represent because it's so deeply needed. And um, I think what you bring is absolutely powerhouse. It is liberation. It is ecstasy. And um, I'm very excited just thinking about all the people that are going to be watching this replay. So I, I really thank you for joining me for today's Inspire High, which has turned into a Zoom session, which has turned into two Zoom sessions that will now be edited and rejoined later. And um, just our willingness to show up, you know, and not rebook and it, it needed to be today. And I really honor that sometimes, you know what I mean? That's the commitment that we both made to really show up for ourselves and show up for each other to hear one another. But um, I'm very excited. Thank you so much for your time, Katerina. Thank you so much for all your kind words and everything that you've brought to the table, too. I mean, I have a girl crush on you as well. Yeah, we both crush out on each other. It's good <laughs> because, because we're doing very similar reflections. We're both, we're both being internally led. And when I see you doing, I'm like, oh, it's so right. I can feel it. It's so right. And then you permit yourself to go a little bit further in it. So I just know that we're going to be amplifying one another from here on out, sweetheart, and that's what I'm committed to do. We're both committed to doing that. That's why we're here, amplifying the other people that are drawn to give themselves that freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, enjoy Honolulu for me. I so can't wait. I know Hawaii is calling to me. I don't know when that's going to come forward, but I'm going to let it be when it is meant to come forward because um, I'm just so grateful that you've given yourself permission to live somewhere that really inspires you, sweetheart. So I'm watching your creation. Oh, yeah. That's a whole other story. That's a whole other story of how that all came to me. It's very, very logical. <laughs> that sounds good. Well, I love you. Thank you so much for your time, Katarina.